Superior Engineering has been one of the long-standing Australian-made manufacturers of suspension parts for the four-drive industry since 2002. In this episode, we get a shop tour of all the different facilities that Superior uses and owns to produce their four-drive suspension products. Today, I met with Michael Hayes, the Managing Director and Founder of Superior Engineering. All right, I'm here with Michael Hayes, the Managing Director, Owner, Founder, everything with Superior Engineering. Now we're here at the main showroom. Um, Superior is not like your general sort of everyday shop. What they've got is actually different sections around the state for certain components and stuff. So we're at the main showroom. Um, what can customers expect when they come to this part of the, with the business? Okay, so if you, if you come over here to Superior Engineering, the best part about the showroom area around here is we've got uh, a little display set up here. We've got basically everything uh, on the walls and little stand around displays and all that. You can come feel them, look at the things, actually check it out. It's always hard when you're on the internet and you're looking at stuff, you never really get a good feel of the quality um, and just the sheer size of things and bits and pieces. So you get that uh, overall sort of package where if you come here to look at something to buy it, you can actually physically pick it up and go, wow, that's cool. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's have a walk around and see what we've got over here. So here we got, this is what I was sort of talking about where you might have a display here. Um, this is the generation one coil spring conversion for the Land Cruisers for the rear end. Yeah. So it, it's a good thing about coming in here. You can actually come in and go, oh cool, I couldn't see that on a photo or whatever like that. Yeah, I can the way you got it flexed it. up as well yeah. is really nice. How yeah. it's sort and of, you can yeah. get a, um, one of the sales guys to come in and actually explain things to you. Whereas on the internet yeah. you don't get that, yeah, definitely. that coolness to it. Oh, awesome. So we've got that, we've got a couple other displays over here. So like we've got a front, it's a front end of a patrol. So like if you're talking to a salesperson, they can obviously explain to you how Superflex arm works or Hyperflex yep. uh, radius. And then you've got your tie rod drag length showing. You can educate people how things work and yeah. all that sort of stuff when you've so got displays. on this as an example, what parts do you manufacture yourself and what sort of factory would this kind of set okay. up? So, so this, this will be a GU, so on here we've got a standard radius arm on here. So yep. that's a part that we make. Yep. Superflex on that side. Uh, so we can talk about the difference there. We've got drag link up there, which theoretically this would be the steering box over here. Yep. Running to that uh, damper, and you've got your panard rod there. And on the back here, you've got a tie rod. Mm -hmm. So we make all those parts on um, obviously the brake line there. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it gives you a bit more of an understanding, especially if you don't know your car well. You know yep. that, oh, I've got to put suspension in it. You don't know all the good bits and pieces go. So as we all know, four drivers, we yeah. flog our trucks pretty hard off hard road. Time, we hit yeah. rocks, we hit, hit stumps, and everything. Yeah. You just you won't break your arms with these sorts of things. Um, all this sort of stuff we do lifetime warranty on. Yeah. Um, but basically, your tie rod on the back, same thing. If you if you can imagine while you're driving over a rock or a log or whatever, first thing you're going to hit is that. Yeah, it's the lowest yeah, point. It yeah, just your diff usually drags over the rock, yeah. and then you hit that, and it, the rock usually ends up between them. Yeah, yeah. drags it back, and then you got your steering all mucked up. So we do that heavy duty. Yep. On the front, same thing, if you're bashing into an obstacle on the front because you can't see over your yep. bonnet, first thing that usually hits is all this gear. Uh, so so they, are, are they solid or is it Yes, yeah, so that's a solid, it's a 4340M. Yep. Um, now there's a few people on the market doing the same as us but they're only doing 4340. Yep. Big difference between 4340M and 4340. Yeah, okay, yeah. Down at the showroom, there's not only suspension parts on display, there's also a whole lot of four drive accessories for your four drive as well. So it's another display down here. We've got a front cut of an IFS Hilux just showing so people can understand the front of this. A lot of this stuff is a little bit harder for people to understand than the old solid axis yeah, and stuff, yeah. the way this all works. It's all modern. Yeah, so we've got our new billet alloy arms here and gas shock absorber there and then on the other side we've got chrome molly arm and yep. some reservoir mounts so yeah you can have a bit of an understanding clearance we can explain yeah. to you about the clearance yeah, issues cool. and all that. It's obviously a different there. setup to that solid axle but the yeah. idea is the same you want to keep your geometry and steering. Yeah everything's got to be spot on. Nice. Yeah so over here we another good thing about coming in the retail store we can show you different shocks and yep. physical size of them and explain to you bits and pieces on the yeah. insides of them. Because you guys make your own yeah, shocks we, but you still get the option of different brands. Yeah we get like our that. shocks made um, from a company called Profender. Yep. So they're the world's largest shock absorber manufacturer. Um, so we've got a very good relationship with them. We get the shock made, it's not just a Profender when you buy it, it's actually got our valving in it, it's got our, what we want for our piston, our seals, our coating, 
shaft hardness, all that sort of stuff, but we don't actually manufacture it here. It's done yeah. overseas in Thailand. Yeah. There's a few bash plates, that sort of thing. Uh, so these are for different vehicles. We've got some patrol stuff and some Land Cruiser, yeah. Ranger stuff, diff guards. Something that's overlooked a lot, I think. Yeah. A lot of guys out there hitting their diff and they're like, I wish I had some protection yeah, on well, there. So. It's like side steps. People don't yeah. put, put them on until they've damaged their doors or their yeah. sills. Then they go, I want to put some side steps on. Damage is done. You've got to get yeah. it on there before. before yeah. yeah, you don't want to go for a run up the cape or whatever, smack a hard rock yeah. and be on the side of the road with a broken ring gear. I'd say something like that's not terribly expensive no, compared well, to replacing a diff. It's you know? like $220. Yeah. Like your ring gear is going to cost you $500 and then you got to pull the thing out, get a mechanic to fit it, so you're talking $1,000. It's, it's cheap insurance. insurance. Yeah, yeah very cheap insurance. So even though this is the main showroom, they still have a fitting workshop for your customers to come in and get all your parts put on. Yeah, so out here we've got sort of mechanic stuff, eh? Yeah, it's just where they go. We get a couple of mechanics here and then a couple over at the other location. Yeah. So here they do the stuff like bull bars, side steps, might be snorkels, yeah. full suspension kits. So they're pretty busy here all the time doing all those sorts of things. Yeah, uh, yes. We don't. The r and not done from this side uh, because this is uh, a different sort of facility than what we've got over there, so obviously. It's pure customer based stuff here, this, really. Yeah, so. this is for when this is set up. So, say so you come to us as a customer, you go, I want to get my suspension kit fitted. Yeah. You can drop your car off here, you can go up to a waiting room upstairs, watch TV, sit in the aircon, yeah. wait for it to get done, or you can just drop it off to us and, yeah. and come back. Sounds like the ticket. Yeah. So, is this sort of where you guys started, or, or what's the history with, with Superior? I know you started it yourself, but. Um, what's yeah, sort of so I'm a, I'm a boilermaker by trade. Yeah. and. Um, Sort of back in 2000, late 2000, I started getting into full drives a bit more and I designed a drop shackle. So then we, I sort of thought to myself, well, if I can do a drop shackle, why not start making some other bits and pieces? Yeah. Started selling the drop shackle, that was popular. Then we went to like control arms, uh, radius arms, bits yeah. and pieces. So that was in a little 6x12 shed just working from home. Yeah, right. Um, I roots. started employing a couple of staff because I was doing it by myself for ages, probably probably a year or two or whatever. Yep. Uh, and, and then who was your sort of your main clients there? Like just they like were. It was more. And... No, it was more competition guys. Yep. I was dealing with. Yep. Uh, the guys that were there used to be events called Tough Track yep. and that sort of thing yep. back then. Yep. Uh, so that was the, the basis of it, sort of thing. The clientele I had. Yeah. And then it gradually grew more and more. We outgrew the six by twelve shed. Yep. And then we moved up to Burp and Gary. Uh, then Burp and Gary, we were we were leasing out say 200 square metres of that. Yeah. Started putting more staff on, and then we went like another 200 metres. Yeah. Just kept growing from there and there. At the moment now we're at this building here's full 35 square metres I think, and then we got 1,200 square metres over at Burp and Gary. Yeah. And now we're looking at moving to maybe a 2,800 square metre yeah. building because we've just outgrown. So it's been some continuous growth yeah, throughout, just, throughout yeah, the years. It's, yeah, it's good strong growth. We're yeah. trying not to grow, we don't want to grow too fast. We're just yeah. trying to do it nice and consistent. At the end of the day, I don't want to lose the quality of the products going out there. Yeah. So we're really trying yeah. to maintain that and just grow with the pace we have to to keep it working well. No worries. Yeah. All right. That's pretty awesome here. Yeah, I think, well, if we get some idea about what goes in the manufacturing, it'd be awesome to see. Yep. Obviously, this is the finished product. Yep. Can we go for a ride and see how these things get made? Yeah, we can go for a run. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so this is one of the um, fab shops, eh? Yeah, so this is one of the places where the CNC machine work gets done. Uh, there's a few different locations we use because the different places have different machines. Yep. So you might find one, one of the places we have might be better with the uh, milling side of stuff. Yep. Another place we might use does the CNC lathe stuff. Okay. A uh, particular place here, we, we've got CNC machines. They do a lot of the turning. Yep. Uh, although there is milling capabilities here as well. Yep, yep. Um, right. So you'll see some of the footage shows the logos getting engraved. Or we, over there, they may have some bosses getting done for drop boxes. Yep. Uh, you can have a look at how they get done. Yeah, yeah. So is this, this one of how many locations? Yeah, we've got four different locations where yeah. the parts are getting CNC uh, milled, yep. milled and, and lathed. Uh, and they're both, they're all, sorry, they're all in Brisbane, all yeah, okay. four locations. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, how come you kind of choose to do that rather than having your own gear in the shop? Okay, or? the reason we've gone this way, when we first started, we had lathes and all the drills and all that. We've gradually steered away from that because the way we structure our business, we're trying to get stuff out as fast as we can out. So what we've done is it's gone more warehousing at Burp and Gary location. Yep. So we've, we've kind of opted away from having machines there as such. We've still got the boiler making and that there, but not so much the machine side of stuff. So for us it works well because it gives us back 1,200 square metres of warehousing where yep. we can have all our stuff finished, put together, boxed on the shelves, ready to go. Yeah. For that we're more efficient than trying to 
have CNC mills and everything in that 1,200 square meter yeah. building. We just don't have the don't have the space. And surely getting the guys doing it who do it day in day out, they're going to be a way more experienced. Yeah, you've, and you've you get got the quality. and you can keep the pressure on the guys. Yeah. You can get the stuff coming to us quicker. Yeah. If you if your four locations can't keep up with us, you can go to another location. You can yeah. say, hey, this this is the specs we want this built to. Yeah. That way you're not restricted to yeah, what you can have in-house. Yeah, you've yeah. got very tight quality control uh, that we follow. When those parts come back, if they're not machined exactly how we want them, they get sent back to that the, the company who's yeah. doing the machining for us. So what they've got here, Sam, they've got over on the right-hand side, they've got SolidWorks. So they've designed the part all there. Then they're over here on master cam. So basically that there is simulating the machining process. Yeah, right, yeah. So once it's from there and that they're all happy with that, then they'll input all that information into the CNC machines machines will then machine that so part. So is that, so it's not like, obviously the final product's got that profile, but you can't just take that much material off in one hit. So is this showing every kind of step for the machine to cut it down? Is that what it's there for? So yeah, what you see there is basically showing the tooling cutting it, if it was yep. on the CNC machine. So they're, they're testing that out in the program and then they're happy with that, how that's gonna operate, then they'll input that. Yep. And then that's what you'll see the machine cutting. All right, so we're at the last stop for today. This is the warehouse where everything comes in and out of the place. Let's have a look. Right. So what we got over here, uh, we've got our like a boiler making section over here. Yep. So we've got the guys over here doing a bit of welding. Okay. Yeah, along here they've got core conversions getting fabricated. Yep. Both sides there. So is this the stuff that comes from those other shops or is this all no, made? No, well, this is all stuff we do here. Yep. Uh, it's more, the stuff we get CNC'd is more Bits and pieces like Anything that. Circular, yeah, yeah, pretty much circular. Or but this, have you got a laser cutter? That yeah, we got we've got a CNC one over there. Yeah. Um, we get, do get some stuff still CNC laser outside. And we've yeah. also got our CNC um, plasma. So it just depends on what the actual part is and the accuracy we need. So the guys here are doing radius arms, putting them together. So, so do you have a, a like a quality assurance sort of? you go through where you check them every yep, now and then? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we've got quality control here. Back against the jig or? Yep, yep. Yeah. everything's in the jig and then you've got your measurements you've got to check. Yep. You've got to check your rulers and everything's all accurate. Yeah. So yeah, they're bit to do with it. Sweet. Um, yeah, obviously because we're going on an automobile, you want it spot on. Yeah, 100%. Bit. So has each bay got a specific job or it just no, depends they, what's coming through? The boilies all do each role. It doesn't really, they don't have to do an individual or specific role. Okay. They can do whatever. So today, Reese could be doing core drop out cones, tomorrow you can be doing radius arms, yep. next day core conversions. They're, they're all trained to do it all. We do have a, a couple of the guys do, like say we've got Ebony who does upper control arms. He specialises in them, he does them really good. So we give Keep them to him yeah. all the time because yep. we know they're going to be spot on. Yeah. But generally they, they all do the same stuff. Yep. Yeah. Basically over here is where our steel comes in. That's axle uh, tubes and yep. axle spindles getting cut there. That saw just cuts all day long for us. Sweet. Uh, this is where all our stuff comes in, like what we're not getting uh, cut here, like we're getting stuff outsourced, laser cutting and that sort of stuff, okay, it'll yeah. come in here. Yeah. Basically there's always two guys here just assembling bits and pieces, like they might be putting panards together or over there on the bench they're doing drop shackles at the moment. This stuff back from coating is it? Or? Yeah, so this stuff's, this stuff's come back and it's, got, it's here to be assembled. Got okay, a bit of yeah. dust on it. Um, so you guys fit all the bushes Yeah, and so basically we've got to press up the front there, so genuine bushes go in and we just, yeah. one of the guys will press them in, they'll put two lock nuts on, put the O-ring, yeah. like the anti-seize, screw them together, uh, check their measurements, all that, make sure they're all good. Over here is where Jake does a lot of the diffs and that sort of stuff in this sort of area. So oh, yeah. he's doing a... Diff stand here. Yeah, so it's a leaf spring. What's this device, just to... So that rotates, it's a, what they call a rotator. Okay. So basically stand on the pedal. Yep. He stands here and welds it, and it'll ah, just spin right. around at the That's speed. That's how you get a, a continuous That's how you weld. Get it, yeah, nice yeah. and neat all the way around. Yep. Uh, th then you can jog it around. If you want to weld on the inside, you can jog that around mm -hmm. to where you want to want to be weld on the inside. So we sort of we keep a lot of our shots here as much as we can on the shelves down in this this area. Yep. Uh, there's some radius arms there, so we've got a few different piles where radius arms sit because you've got so many sizes. Yeah. Okay. And there's hyperflexes, superflexes, radius, yep. heaps of different. Keeping it all managed back here. Um, over in this area here, there's some more radius arms, and it's basically our R&D section over here. Yep. So we've got two hoists there at 
the moment there's a Hilux on there we're doing stuff on and we've got a 76 we're doing stuff on. So yes, yeah, that's where all the pretty cool stuff happens. Yeah. We used to have it as a fitting bay but then R&D just overtook it. Yeah. Like once we move out of here, like it just opens. As you can see, we're pretty full here. This opens up more avenues once we can get out of here and in a bigger building. And like you say, if you bring out a new product, you want to put a lot into R&D to make sure it's right. It's got to be, sure it's got to be right, yeah. Yeah, so what we do over here, we do our shock absorber servicing and repairs, that sort of stuff. So you might have someone, this one's a Profender coilover. Yeah. Obviously it's coming out, we'll check it, make sure it's all good before it gets sent out. But you might have someone send a shock to us that needs a service kit in it because yeah. the seal's leaked. We do the different brands, we do like Superior Pro Fender, uh, Kings, Fox, like we do them all. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you might send us one and say, hey, the ride's a bit rough, like, yeah. it's, it's a bit rough over stutters, that sort of stuff. Uh, we basically get that information off you, then we can bring it here, pull it apart, yeah. and change the shim stack. Okay. To ride yeah, even better. I didn't know that. I know you guys do a lot of your, your products, but it's probably interesting for people to know that you can yeah. actually do that, that servicing yeah, as well. Yeah, it's not a thing, we don't advertise it, but we yeah, certainly do it. Just yeah, yeah. Like we, we get enough work from just people asking us, let alone without having to advertise it. Yeah. Um, but shocks for us, it's, it's a major thing for our business, the yeah. shock absorber side of stuff. Because yeah. everything, because no we do. Your suspension is you want it to you ride gotta, right. You got to have a shock that's right to go with it. You can make all the best parts in the world to put a crap shock on it or an untuned. You can have the best brand shock and not tuned right, yeah. and it's still going to ride crap. So yeah, last thing you want to do is that. So you want want the thing right. So yeah, we can certainly help getting ride the ride spot on. Yeah. So what we've got here, this is one of the packing bays, like for the smaller stuff. Yep. So we just set up a set of rollers here. So the guys go and pick the jobs, put them on here, and they just keep pushing them along as yep. the day goes on. So as, as they get pushed up, they get packed, more jobs go behind it. So it's just a consistent. So each board is a different oh, customer. Yeah, so yeah, it's so like, that's a job for those yeah. parts. It goes up to the computer, they'll punch it in, that it's going, tracking yeah. number, wrap it up, out it goes. Keeps things organised. <laughs> yeah. So this is like your OS, this is more your real small stuff, OS post, that mainly. Yep. So same thing, set of rollers here, jobs will be on, boards, they just keep pushing them up, keep packing them. Get packed out the door. We're just trying to do it as efficient as we can. Yeah. Yeah. So in here is is the phone room. So this is just uh, it's fairly small, but seems to do the job for us. Yeah. So the guys here are just basically on the phone all the time. Yeah. As soon as I hang it up, it rings again. Yeah. Which is a good thing. I've had experience with these boys, I'm sure. Yeah. It's yeah. another thing with the customer service. Always happy to help, and yeah. you know, I guess it's. A lot of guys didn't know that how many different variables there can be for their certain vehicle. They always can. Yeah, that's can true. Have an answer, so. Some of the guys here really specialise in some things. Like you might yeah. talk to Ryan and he knows Nissan really well. You might talk to Jeremy and he knows Hilux really yeah. well. Like it's always good if, if you're lucky enough to land with those guys yeah. that really specialise in that. But saying that too, all the guys here know a great deal about yeah. four drives. They all own four drives. They all love four drives. Yeah, yeah, you'll always get the right information ringing us. All right, guys, that has been the shop tour of Superior Engineering. Well, shops, there were a few to go to. So it was really awesome. I came all the way to Queensland to see this place, so I was pretty happy with that. And I've been using Superior's gear for, I don't know, three or four of my cars now for a few years. So make sure you jump on their page, give them a like, give them a follow. They do some awesome stuff as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace. I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here and I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe.